Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is going to be a quick video on another Flyers youngster. Just did one on Noah Cates after doing his player profile about a week and some change ago. I just did a video on how well he's been playing with the Flyers. That'll be linked at the end. This one's going to be on Bobby Brink, the second place guy, and the Hobie Baker Award that Dryden McKeg, or Dryden McKay won um, after breaking the wins record as a goaltender. But when it comes to Brink as a whole, this far, Bobby Brink has been sharp and has looked good for a Philadelphia Flyers. Now we just need uh, guys around him, other than Noah Cates, the aforementioned, to continue to look good as well. And then the Flyers would actually finally be sitting pretty, right? That would be nice. But you can't always have all nice things at once. But I do like how Noah Cates has looked. I do like how Brink has looked. I do like how Frost has looked as a puck possessor and a finesser with his hands because that's the type of player. He is more of an offensive zoner than defensive zoner. I think anybody could have told you that other than maybe the Flyers organization. Um, so it's nice to see that. I think also he should be moved from center. Cates should be put at center. Uh, you should have Cates with Tibbet and Faraby. And let Frost try to move out wing somewhere and then move JVR down in the lineup because you're not going to get that much more trade value for getting him the 20 goals than you are for not getting the 20 goals because everybody kind of just knows what the hell JVR is at this point. And if they don't and give you more for him, then hats off to that team for helping us out. But I don't foresee it happening. So put Frost on the wing. Put Cates at center. Let Bobby Brink just dominate on the power play. Stop limiting him. Uh, Rachel Donor um, said it on the Flyer Up podcast. I completely agree with her. It looks like they're limiting the hell out of Bobby Brink because the Flyers are... They don't let their team motion enough. If you look at good power plays, they motion more. If you have enough guys that are talented, especially even in the damn ECHL, our best power play in our organization is by far Kirk McDonald's, even though their rating isn't the best, but the Phantoms power play sucks, and so does the Flyers. The... Um, you you have to cycle. You have to have players kind of almost play positionalist in the zone, and Kirk McDonald even talks about that. Mike Yo overcomplicates everything. He might be a player's coach and a motivator and has the elk of that, but he's definitely not a guy that's a great head coach. He's probably a better assistant because he overcomplicates every little thing. Let the guys motion. The best thing for Bobby Brink is to motion him because he's been good on the power play. He's been a good puck possessor along the boards on the power play. He's even been able to fire some shots, but he's been looking to pay us more, and you have him in spots that are not the best for that spot. This isn't the first time we're talking about this. It was about the 8700th time, 87th millionth time, whatever the hell you want to say, that we've been talking about the Flyers, whether it's A.V. or Mike Yo, putting players in wrong spots to succeed. It's about time this organization gets their head out of their behinds and puts guys in spots to see. Put Cates at center. Um, put, keep Brink where he should be because Brink is playing great. He's a guy that has a great shot. He's a guy that's going to be an offensive zoner more than a defensive zoner. Cates is the better defensive zoner youngster. And then Tippett's been doing better getting shots off too. I would put Cates, Brink, and Tippett even potentially on a line before the end of the year to see how all of those youngsters play together because Cates, great defender. Uh, Brink, solid on both ends, but not a great defender, great in the offensive zone. And then Tippett great in the offensive zone, not good in the defensive zone at this point of his career. So I think that could even work. But either way, there's no reason why you should be telling Bobby Brink to limit his motion when when you watch this kid in college, one of the main reasons he was disgusting at Denver was how good he was at getting to the spots on the ice, getting to each zone of the ice, finding the smallest open lane, almost like a damn running back in football. But you can't do that when you have a bunch of motionless people that the Flyers' offense is on 5-on-5 five five or the power play. The power play makes zero sense because why the hell would you be motionless? Uh, where with the 5-on-5 five five play, it still doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense because move around more, rotate more, you're going to draw defenders more to a guy and get somebody open. I mean, it's obviously easier said than done, but it's also a strategy that could have been implemented two months ago. And it's something that still hasn't been implemented yet. And that's why the Flyers are so frustrating because I'm with your reef that said it. I don't know if he still feels this way, but said it before on the Flyer Nitty Gritty podcast, getting gritty with it. Check them out over there. Vasily and your reef do great things. I I'm with him that I don't think with the, like I don't think the teams are going to be good next year. Don't get me wrong. But I also don't think they're as bad as they were this year. I think 
that, that people have been put into multiple spots to not succeed more than guys have been put into spots to succeed. And you can say whatever you want about, yeah, it's on the players also. Yeah, I don't care. Because you also have to be put in a spot to freaking succeed from the coaching staff, one that is probably one of the worst in the NHL. I'm just going to be blunt about it. So um, I don't think most of this coaching staff, if any, is going to be back next year. Yo had some success uh, with Minnesota. Hasn't really had success in the league since then, since he kind of fell off a cliff at the end there in St. Louis. And seems like a brilliant guy, a brilliant hockey mind as an assistant to just be able to focus on what you basically manage as tasks, if that's defense or if that's special teams or if that's overall team defense from the forwards to the defense, whatever you give his assistant coaching task to. He seems like a guy that's much better positioned to do that. I don't think Mike Yo's a head coach. I also, maybe you keep him around as an assistant, but that's just a weird dynamic if you do. So I don't necessarily see it happening. But I would say Jim Montgomery right now is my favorite to have come in and be the head coach. Arif Fasoli and I talked about that in a uh, Twitter group. They also talked about it in the latest Getting Gritty with it. So, again, go check them out over there on Flyers Nitty Gritty for sure. But this has been a quick video on Bobby Brink and kind of venting as well about the Flyers. With, with Brink already in his early career, not putting him in the best place, he's just a seat at times, even though he still looks very good out there. Um, well, he's kind of one of those guys where he makes a couple bad plays, he makes two or three good ones for it, so it balances it out in the end where we don't see that enough from guys. Um, Zamula's also a guy that's look good, but I'll do another video on him in the near future. For everybody, have a great, safe, pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below to help us grow to 230 or more by the end of April. We really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. Go Flyers. Let's keep continuing to see the youngsters that we're going to build with and grow with into next season. I think Brink and Cates will make the team out of the gate next year. That's my early prediction. Adder, I think, will use some seasoning in the AHL. I don't think he'll use an entire season, though, but we'll use some seasoning in the AHL. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.